one of the most prestigious research and educational institutes of the world. We have alumni as well as people who have taught there like Indira Gandhi, Manmohan Singh, literally half of UK's prime ministers, Stephen Hawking, and people like Isaac Newton have played their part in teaching at this university in helping build Oxford to the level that it is today. As the oldest English-speaking university, it claims to be over nine centuries old. And according to sources online, apparently it was founded in 1096 or 1096. It sounds like a zip code. I don't even know how to say this. Like 1100, 1200, I understand. How do you say 1096? Is it 1096? Is it 1096 but that's how old it is and just for reference that is even before columbus arrived in north america now compared to the us i do see some benefits for international students specifically indian students studying in the uk as opposed to the us because the indian and the british education system are quite similar well, for obvious reasons um but basically the primary school secondary school passing out of grade 12 even the whole MBBS structure for like the medicine route as well as engineering and everything revolving around how the education system works is almost alike. Now with these similarities, you guys must be thinking that, wow, like this is like gonna be a very smooth transition. But the one thing I do wanna like stop you guys at is because it's so alike, the one thing that Oxford looks for the most is grades and only grades. And they are so specific, I have never seen such specific grade-based requirements for any university. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the application process for Oxford for undergrad as well as graduate students, and we'll look at some scholarships and financial aids that are also offered. Now, I know that there are a couple students that are new to the channel, and for those of you guys that have recently subscribed, my name is Saloni, and no, I didn't study in the UK. I actually completed my studies in the US. I've studied at Harvard and Cornell, and I've been making the Road to Success series recently where we break down this entire application process for international students for different universities. So let's jump right into this one. So the admission process for undergrad students is an eight step process and we're gonna go through all of the eight steps really quickly. Now step one is when you're thinking of applying, typically you will start to apply one year before your intended start date. Now the application process will go through the UCAS, which is kind of like a common portal used to apply to multiple universities um, in the UK. And the application itself opens in June and you can submit the application anytime from September onwards all the way till October 15th. Now the UK has specifically Oxford has very strict deadlines that you have to submit your application by 6 p.m on October 15th, so don't miss out on that. Step two is in the UCAS portal, you first have to select the degree and the stream that you're applying for because there may be some specific degree requirements that you have to satisfy. That brings us to step three, where you can add your college and within Oxford University, you'll have 45 different colleges to choose from depending on the degree and what stream you're applying for. Step four is in the UCAS portal itself, you'll have to write a personal statement describing why you're applying for this degree and kind of what motivated you to kind of take up this career path. Step five is an admission test. Now, unlike a lot of like standardized testing that's out there, Oxford has its own entrance exam sort of policy where it's a mandatory test that you have to write. It's not an optional requirement. So, you know, get ready to spend a lot of time studying and preparing for this test. And you even have like department specific tests. Like for example, if I wanted to study biomedical engineering, I would actually have to write the BMAT. And for Cambridge, they even consider your IIT JE scores to see if you're a good enough student or not. I mean, this is like taking scores and marks just to like the next level competition. Step six is an optional writing sample, wherein some departments and courses may require this. They give you a specific topic um, on which you have to write on. And I believe you even have to get this graded by one of your teachers in your own school. And this is to test your ability in creative writing and analytical skills like logic and reasoning. Step seven is, well, you're almost at the finish line but um, sometime around December students can expect to be interviewed by someone from the admissions committee at Oxford or maybe even an alumni. It's a short interview but it's basically to get to know the personality and what you are 
in real life rather than just a piece of paper and the application. The last step, which is step eight, is that you can finally expect to hear back on a decision whether you were admitted or not sometime in January. But hold on, like before you guys get excited, um, all of the offers that Oxford actually provides are conditional offers. And this means that they will give you an offer. They wait for your 12th grade board exams because at that time you would still be a student maybe about to write the board exams. And if you don't perform so great on your board exams, that offer can be taken back. So it's kind of like a conditional offer based on the fact that you do perform well in your 12th board exam. Now, I know that you guys are going to fill the comments asking if your profile is good enough for Oxford. And before you guys do, uh, just for like your reference and some context. Now, let's say someone is from the CBSE board. Oxford will expect you to have A1 and A2 grades and a rough profile revolving anywhere between 90 or 95% is what they expect from an average student. So if I was applying, I don't even think I could because I got like somewhere around the 80s in my 10th and 12th board exams. Now the tuition fee for international students can be anywhere roughly between 27,000 pounds to 40,000 pounds. And this depends on which course you take and living expenses for about nine months or so, you can expect to spend about 16,000 pounds. So, you know, it does add up and it is quite expensive to study there. But I don't want you guys to get afraid of this big number just yet because I have two scholarships that are specifically for international students that covers the entire tuition fee. So go ahead and like the video uh, because it took me a while to actually find these. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Reach Oxford Scholarship. And this is valid for international students from various countries, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan are all included. And it covers three to four years of your entire degree duration. They cover your tuition fee, living cost, and even airfare tickets. So it's a pretty good scholarship, very rare because each year only two to three students get it and anyone from any course except medicine can apply. The next scholarship is the Simon and June Lee scholarship, which is available for international students of various countries. Now, this one is a little more specific because students in the humanities division can only apply for this scholarship. Uh, making it even more competitive. Um, Oxford only offers one award per year. So only one student can actually get the scholarship. But if you get it, they will cover all of your tuition for three or four years, as well as living expenses. Now, these two scholarships were the ones that I found that more students could apply for. But I did see some specific scholarships for international students. So I'll put a screenshot on the screen. If you guys see one that fits, you know, your eligibility and requirements, feel free to explore that further. So in order to apply to these two scholarships and the others that are available, the process is quite simple. You don't even have to worry about it until you're actually admitted. So so once you fill out your UCAS application form and let's say you get admitted by January, you will have to fill out a special scholarship form and submit that by February requesting for aid. Now for graduate students that are applying for master's or PhD programs, the process is quite similar. You'll be using Oxford's online portal to submit all of your personal information. In addition to this, any past colleges that you've attended, you'll need to get your transcripts, your board exam mark sheets, all of that stuff. And you know, needless to say, the better marks you have, the better chances you do have of getting in. Um, a statement of work, which is very similar to an academic statement of purpose, describing why you're doing this degree and what your research goals are. Any um, writing samples that may be required by your department, publications, your CV. And if there are any other questions, those might be department specific that you'll need to look into. Now, I did see that some departments may need a GRE or TOEFL score. So you'll need to see if those are optional for you or not. Now, other than that, um, you are all set to pay the application fee and submit your application. Now, when it comes to financial aid for graduate students, I couldn't find anything that specifically said this is for international students only, but Oxford University does state that 47% uh, of graduate students receive either partial or full funding. So I think it's safe to assume that if you're working in like a lab based requirement, you can expect to get some stipend because this is the general um, criteria of just masters and PhD based degrees. All right, guys, so that's all that I had for this video. I know that it's a break from US and Canada. But personally, from like a scholarships and funding standpoint, I wasn't really that impressed with Oxford. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, like it's a great place to study. But imagine, you know, spending like 
80,000 pounds out of your pocket because they're just so limited scholarships. The two that I found, a total of four or five students each year can get those. Like that is not enough. Like compared to the US and Canada, I feel like Oxford can do better. Just my personal opinion. Now for those of you that are watching till this very point, like first of all, thank you and smash that like button. Let's get this video to 500 likes. I think all of the Road to Success videos are either very close to or have crossed 500 likes and you know, that's really, really a big deal. Um, I do want to like address one thing. I know that in the a timeline that we made we were supposed to do University of Michigan for this particular episode and I ended up doing Oxford instead uh, that's because I looked into the University of Michigan and there are almost there are no scholarships available to international students so I felt like you know there was no point in making a hundred percent scholarship video for a university that didn't really offer much to international students um, so we took a slight deviation, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you're watching till this point, I have a very important question for you. And this is all the way from Karan. Um, basically, leave it in the comments below. Um, which team are you? Shahi Paneer or Karai Paneer? <laughs> Mere khayal se, I think Shahi Paneer is more like butter chicken. Like consistency wise. Yeah. Huh. Or Karai Paneer mein capsicum or onion hota hai. तो मेरे को शाही पनीर बोरिंग हो गया ना काफी लाइक क्या सिंपल लाइक थोड़ा कढ़ाई पनीर में थोड़ा मजा आता है कढ़ाई में ऑल राइट सो लेट्स गेट दिस इन द कमेंट्स एंड सी यू नो व्हिच टीम पीपल आर ऑन बट या सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल इफ यू हैव नॉट ऑलरेडी एंड आई विल सी यू गाइस टुमारो टेक केयर बाय नीड बेस्ड फाइनेंशियली इज ओनली अवेलेबल टू स्टूडेंट्स दैट आर सिटीजंस मैं पता हूं क्या डालूंगी वो जो क्या था जो पूरा <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where this is coming from. Hmm. <laughs>